The Russian royal family, also known as the Tsars of Russia, have faced harder times than usual in recent history. From the October Revolution in 1917 to the brutal assassination of the entire Romanov family. But in 1962, Vladimir III, the next heir to the Russian throne, has found himself in charge of a small region in Western Russia, Vyatka. However, enemies remain plenty, from the endless German bombs suppressing morale to the neighbouring warlords raiding each other every chance they get. And as tensions rise, Vladimir fights a war on two fronts. To the north is the Revolutionary Front, remnants of the Red Army soldiers desperate to return the Soviet Union, and to the south, Samara, an anti-Bolshevik military government who willingly collaborate with the Germans. In this precarious position, can Vladimir reunite Russian lands? And most importantly, can the Tsar reinstate his rule to the throne in St. Petersburg and Moscow? Hi, I'm Colonel Cam, and welcome to 10 years reforming the Russian Empire in the New Order. Hello guys, and welcome back to another TNO video, a mod where Germany won World War II and everything's about to come crashing down. Now really quickly before we get into the video, please like and subscribe. A lot of time and effort goes into these videos and I really appreciate it if you do those things. Thank you guys so much for 5k. In fact, when we did hit 5k, I held a mod vote and the mod that won was Cold War Iron Curtain. So that is gonna be a video coming up, uh, the next video most likely. I've also been working on a second multiple endings video for you guys, so that's gonna come out in a little while. But apart from that, let's get straight into the video. Vladimir III, he is actually the rightful heir of the, the Russian throne. So this is kind of like a monarchist. Well, hopefully you're trying to reunite Russia under the under the monarchy. Anyway, we got a Luftwaffe terror bombing, as usual. Unrepentant reaction, which is actually a positive national spirit. I mean, I don't mind that. Uh, the Tsar and himself, again, another positive national spirit. We get political power gain and war support. Military infighting, that's that's actually pretty bad, we need to get rid of that. And uh, this, another positive, what's with all these positive national spirits, man? It's, they're supposed to be bad, look at all these good ones. Um, product efficiency cap, factory output, oh, we can produce stuff a lot easier, and reliability goes up for some reason, but yeah. Cool, nice. After looking through all the national spirits and all the decisions, I kind of realized this is the same setup as the West Russian Revolutionary Front, which I already played. Uh, go check out that video, it's a great video, but this video is a, a little bit different. Anyway, um, I decided to start raiding people immediately. Okay, I should be, they refuse, yeah, I don't care. Okay, war, look at that, There's some distillery. Uh, there we go, we get a loot and treasure. That's 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 good, okay, let's continue down our our focus tree, Imperial, or sorry, we get to make a decision here, the Tsar's speech, we'll do this, I don't think it matters what order we do it in. So as this nation, we have the option to kind of liberalize Russia or turn it into more of a like a democracy with a head of state, you know, like a king or something, anyway, um, we don't, we can though, I guess that's cool. The Russia, Russia speaks Russian, so shall the court, the emperor can speak multiple language, so can the court. Oh, I think this might be a decision of what happens to our country. Okay. We're gonna try and keep it Russian, okay? Russian, Russia speaks, Russia speaks Russian. So shall the court, there we go. Anyway, we raided more dudes. Uh, we didn't even have to attack, really. They kind of just gave up. And then someone tried to raid us and we defended it. Anyway, it was kind of a boring year because it was just setting stuff up. Uh, on to 1963. After failing to raid more people, it turns out that there was this big chase going on and I had to make a decision on this chase. It's a bit weird. Oh, we found him. We found this guy, apparently. Okay, uh, the figure had taken off running, so this is guy we, we, we're searching for, already, and we found him. We're chasing him, right? We can continue running, or split up and try to cut him off. What kind of decision is this, man? Why am I making this decision? We're gonna cut him off, you know? We're, 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 we're about it, right? He escapes. Oh, you're joking. Oh my, we were gonna cut him off, man. What do you mean? Someone was supposed to follow behind him. We're gonna have a very good army. I think we already have one of the better armies. I think the only one that I think we're going to struggle with, the only country, is the West Russian Revolutionary Front. They're generally pretty good. Um, from what I remember, they have a pretty sizable army to begin with, so... They're going to be an issue, but apart from that, hey. Anyway, we finally got to the end of our first focus tree, and that means, well, we got another one, and uh, this one would actually, well, the end of this one would give us the opportunity to do a battle royale in the Samara, the Sum Sumatra decisions to destroy everyone in Western Russia, hopefully. I don't understand. When it says increase, can someone explain to me in the comments, what does it mean by increases effectiveness? Because... We have broadened conscription. It said increases the effectiveness of broadened conscription. It doesn't just move up to extensive conscription, or does is that what it means? Like, I, I, I don't know. 
I'm just gonna start the year by saying that this was the hardest war I've ever fought in all of my videos. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, okay? I had to restart a couple of times this year just because it was so difficult. I kept losing. I had to find a way to win this. It was impossible. Look at this debt, man. Debt is going way up. We need to stop this debt. We need to start paying it off. And it was time to begin the reclamation. I did not want to attack a country that would put me on a border with a stronger country, so I went south instead of north, because I did not want to be on the front with the West Russian revolutionaries, all right? They were too strong. Parade. Cool. Oh, what's this? Oh, yes, of course, the military supplies. Okay, so we need to increase our supplies, decrease the chaos. So I decided to attack Tartasan first, uh, this random country. It, it was pretty easy, um, definitely did not set the tone for the rest of the entire year. However, there was an issue. A country th of origin that we do not know is going to attack us within a month by this little orange thing in the top thing. Anyway, this was a problem because my army was on Tartasan border. I did not want to fight a war on two fronts. This ended up happening anyway, but I, I guessed wrong as well. <laughs> We're in a bit of a situation. Hey. Okay, hurry up. Just go and get Cheboskeri or whatever. Everyone on this border here because we desperately need to do that. We were the first one to capitulate a country, which is pretty good. What decision is it? Occupy Tartasan. Where's that? Fortunately, I capitulated Tartasan in time, otherwise it would have been a disaster, and I managed to get my army onto this was commie Soviet Republic. But unfortunately, this would put us on a border with a revolutionary front, so I was a bit nervous. And even more bad news, another country just started justifying on us, and I had no idea which one it was. Another attack. Okay. Anyone could declare war on us any second. And it turns out it was the Aryan Brotherhood that would declare war on us. The other side of the, uh, the country, which is, uh, very annoying. Hurry up. Yes! Okay, we capitulated them. Boom. Everyone? Everyone go down to Aryan Brotherhood immediately. <laughs> immediately get down there. Okay, so this is the part I had to retry like three times. So uh, as soon as we capitulate the Aryan Brotherhood, both Samara and the West Russian Revolutionary Front declare war on me. So my plan for the third time in was to declare war on Samara first, hopefully take them out, and then we could have our whole military on the West Russian Revolutionary Front instead of having it split between. That was my plan, but uh, it still didn't really work. White flags on the border. The West Russian Revolutionary Front gets if it re uh, refuses our terms. Uh oh. Okay, so they've just declared war on us. They have just declared war on us. Okay, we need to be careful. These guys are strong, man. Uh, yep. There we go. Did we declare war on them, or did they declare war on us? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Anyway, move forwards. So my idea was to rush Samara down. Nope, it turns out they got a much bigger military than I anticipated, especially this early, all right? They normally declare war on us a little bit after, but I tried declaring war on them early. They still got a very big military. How, we, how did we end up fighting war on two fronts? How did this end up happening? However, there was a glimmer of hope. Two motorized divisions sitting on the southern part of the Samaran border were open and free to go to the dense city populated, populated victory point dense area of the Samaran capital. Like, just have a look. Divisions galore. Divisions galore. Of course. Can't even take that. With this guy is nothing. Okay, good, we, we did take it. And after a bunch of snaking around divisions, mind you, we have like half the size of their army. We finally managed to do some like actual damage. No, please. This is my only hope. This one man over here. And after enough micromanaging and snaking and moving my divisions around, it happened. We actually capitulated Samara. If we could just keep this guy here until he leaves. Oh, wait, we did it. We annexed them. No way that just, okay, 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 okay. We need to, we need to really focus. We got, we got a bunch of military factories all on guns, all of them on guns. And so began the great rush of half of our army to get up to the Northern Front. And we actually had a lot of men right now and one army against the West Russian revolutionary. So we actually had a bigger army than them. So it wasn't too bad. Oh, we got there. That's it, they capitulated. Wow, that was a lot of effort. Okay, now we just got one left. Hard. That was actually really difficult. I had to like lock in completely. After the neutral state of Volgoda had capitulated, we could reunite the uh, the Western Russian sovereignty or something. Yeah, form the sovereignty of Western Russia. Get a research slot at overextended administration, whatever. There it is. The imperial flag over West Russia. Now we had that dealt with, um, Mamansk had their uprising. I wasn't really too thrilled about it because they're a people's republic. It's not like we're trying to reform the Soviet Union or anything around here. So uh, that was that was a not really interesting. Move on to 1966. Yeah, 
Here we are, 1966. We have volunteers in uh, Mamansk. We gotta help them out. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna be the same as what I did with uh, the uh, West Russian unit, Unitary Front, Revolutionary Front, where we just invade. Um, so I've got my army here just in case that does be, uh, that does happen. Yeah, so the whole Finland thing is gonna be the same, except that we have an election now, and uh, this election is a bit interesting. It, it's very confusing. The people of Russia are gearing up for election season, an idea once unthinkable scant decades before, now it's up to the Russian people to decide the fate of their nation of their, and their leaders. I'm gonna go for v VNS, right? Yeah. Alright, we, we might come back to, to do different ones, but right now we're gonna do VNS, uh, he will show us the way, so now we get campaigning, Oh, this looks like, what in the, can, why can't that, why, why does this mod have to make the most complicated decision tabs in the entire world? Can't they just make a pie chart? With, and then just like different pie charts for different regions, which is the most popular. Why does it have to look like this? This looks like I'm about to break into government websites. Yeah, so I kind of just ignored that for the most most part. And then we've also got the Ural things, you know, trying to integrate all these Ural places. But next to us is the Ural Military Dix District. And that would make more sense if they had charge of it. I don't know, but it's... Com all right, we are ready. Hang on, let me just make it. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's uh, launch the full intervention. Seven days. I didn't realize it would take seven days. But... And it was essentially the same. We uh, capitulated that little country to the left of us, and then we started walking into Finland. Unfortunately, Mamans capitulated before we could do anything, but they're a People's Republic, okay? We don't care. And then Finland offered a ceasefire, and then we said no, and then we made them capitulate. Well, not capitulate. We made them surrender, and then they gave us all of the territory that we asked for. And now it was time to deal with the Urals, and, uh, well, I, d I didn't really know what I was doing. We currently have zero. So how do I get influence? So there's a region, that I, I, I gotta read this. The influence we have over the Ural state will be dependent largely on their initial receptiveness. So it turns out we actually needed to finish our focus tree first before we could do this. And I had no idea. So I was just like, so I didn't even have bro. Now I'm not gonna lie, not much really happened between 67 and 68 because we weren't really allowed to declare war on the Ural Military League to unify Western Russia, or Russia at all, uh, until 1969. So we had to just wait around. I was just, this is just gonna be a brief summary of what happened during that time. So uh, we finished that part of the focus tree and I could finally do the Urals except it was too late because all of them, all of the countries I was trying to influence had already gone to the Ural Military District. And then I looked at this lake in Africa. Did they drop like a really big nuclear bomb here or something? <laughs> is this the cause? Oh, is this? Oh, this was the cause of terraforming, right? Yeah. They also, in previous versions of the mod, they actually had this like fully filled in. And then the common turn formed, and then we ran out of focuses to do. And before you know it, it was 1969, and it was time for the reunification of Russia war. <laughs> 1969. I think we can declare war. There we are. Prepare for war. The decision is available for the reunification of Russia. Obviously, we need to cover this. What I've done is actually I've only got eight divisions along this red line. One division for every province to hopefully just hold it and then the rest of our army is just going to march in because all the victory points are down here, right? I mean, there's nothing up here. There's no point walking in. We have no supply. There's no point. So we're going to mostly attack down here and concentrate our forces. So yeah, it should be good. I've clicked the button. Okay, the Ural War here. Um, ooh, okay, so we have to have uh, preparedness above 75% to declare war. All right, well, let's start preparing. And the uh, preparation involved spamming all the buttons and then waiting. Far East has gone crazy. They're all declaring war on each other, and soon it will be... Yeah, wow. And it'll be us at war, and I will unify the rest of Siberia, don't worry. Oh, they just declared war on us. Oh, we didn't even have to, I was about to declare war on them, but they fully just declared war on us, and we are getting pushed back. We weren't getting pushed back for long. Not long after, we were on the offensive and uh, trying to get this encirclement. Uh, we've, we've, we've actually taken the capital. Um, okay. Surely, down into Chebelinsk, and then we crush the whole army here. I decided that I, I was down too much manpower and to make my division smaller, and then that kind of helped us get this small encirclement. Them. Stop them. We did it. Oh my gosh. I don't sound very excited, but I was playing for too long at this point, but we actually got a half decent encirclement. So there it is. We would have no trouble pushing into the rest of their country. All right, there we go. Oh, that was, that was actually hard. Okay, that gonna be it. 99. Oh my god, they're pulling a Soviet Union on us. And it would not take long for them to capitulate, and now we could press the button to reunify West, or not just Western Russia, now it's just Russia, so it's pretty good. 
surely we get caused. No, we just get caught. We just we just become the Russian Empire. Boom. There we go. Russian Empire. Nice. Hey, normal flag and there it is. And now we just had Siberia to worry about and that would have to wait until the 70s. However, we couldn't declare war on them until 1971 and, and after they had finished up all their wars as well. So we were kind of just waiting around. Uh, but one year before we uh, begin the re complete re reunification war where we fully unify Siberia. So uh, we'll finish this focus tree that we've got. I've just finished that. We'll, we'll finish this. If we have time, we'll go into the atomic age. I probably won't be using nuclear bombs. I don't think we're going to go that, that far, but yeah. Oh, yep. Okay, they did it. There it is, the Russian Empire versus the Siberian Soviet Socialist Republic. It seems like this, the, the civil war between the Whites and the Reds is back on the table. Look at this. The, the, the Whites are here now, the Reds are here. It's, and just like that, we were ready to declare war. Alright, it is 1971 and oh, yep, okay, oh, we got the uh, Siberian Soviet Socialist Republic. Of course, we need to deal with these these guys round two coming right up the whites versus the reds it's, uh, that's what i'm calling it we can officially prepare for the unification war so let's click that button and we can prepare there it is the russian reunification war and uh we have 200 political power so oh we can't do one all right whatever back at siberia 30 days and we declare war on them there it is all right forwards we will we'll, we'll, uh, easy there we go all right as our planes in the air Yes, air supremacy, good. And I did the same strategy as last time. I put as little divisions as I could in the north and then put like the bulk of my army in the south because that's where all the victory points were and it worked last time, so why not again? Oh, that is a lot of divisions right there. Oh, for TNO, that's like... That is so many. You know, I may have uh, overhyped the battle here. It really wasn't hard. A, a little bit of snaking and then, I mean, we capitulate them. Okay, we've annexed automatically annex the Soviet thing. So there it is. The Russian Empire is almost back. Uh, we can actually integrate all this and we have enough man uh, political power to just do all of it at once. But now we can do this, reunify the motherland. And there it is, the rise of the Russian Empire. History repeats itself, huh? There it is, Russian reunification. That was a nice little jingle. Anyway, um, I had just noticed that Moscow, the territory, isn't actually in the Reich's Pact anymore because Speer is doing like a liberal thing and then there's a slave revolution that goes on. I don't know, but that means I may have used the console commands to declare war on Moscow because I couldn't do it normally. Part of the Reich's Pact now, so it's kind of just like free land, you know? And we'll get our we'll get our land back because I'm not leaving it. Oh, like how can you how can you do the end of the content and not even have an, as Russia and not even have like Moscow or Saint Petersburg? That's wild. Change your capital. Slave revolt in the Reich. Oh, that's what that is. It's time for. Oh, this is the slave revolt. Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is so interesting. Let's go. Yeah, slave revolt. Let's go. There it is. We have annexed uh, them in the chaos of the slave revolt. Yep, that's right. That yep, the chaos of the slave revolt. That's what that did. Perfect. Okay, let me see. I didn't. I didn't look if the Hoi Four Command can change capital. Unfortunately, we would not be able to change the capital, so we're just gonna have to live with Vyatka as our capital and not Moscow or St. Petersburg. It doesn't, it doesn't make much sense, and uh, I was gonna stop here, so I'm not gonna go and do Central Asia. I did that last time. I'm not gonna go to war with Germany. I did that last time, so uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.